Last thing I'd want to talk about um, in this topic is Malice's Law. Uh, because between Brewster's Law and Malice's Law, Brewster we just saw, and Malice's Law, one of those almost always comes up on your exam, and they're really straightforward. There's really not much to them. So Malice's Law, um, I think, is a neat one too. So we're going to look at a situation where we have uh, two polarizers this time. So uh, we're going to have, let me just draw it maybe, I'm going to try to draw in 3D, even though it's hard to. So we're going to have one thing, this is like a piece of paper or something that's angled this way. I'm going to have another one over here. So this is going to be a polarizer. And this is another polarizer. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to have things, uh, well, we're going to have, let's say, a vertically uh, oriented polarizer. What a polarizer does is just a sheet or a piece of some material that what it does is the light coming in, only light that's got a polarization uh, that's parallel to this polarizer can go through. The rest of it will be absorbed. In other words, it'll just sort of heat up and that's it. Light is lost. So these things, they act as ways to dim the light in a sense because you get some of it is transmitted and, you know, out. So let's say uh, coming in right here, let's say this is I0. This is going to be, um, I'm going to define it here actually. So I0 is going to be the, whoa, that's a big I. Here we go. I0 is going to be the uh, intensity of the incident light. Now intensity is going to be measured in uh, power per unit area, so it's going to be watts per meter squared. You could measure this with a detector. You could actually see you know, how many watts does it detect for its surface area. Now we're going to also have, um, so this is coming in, we've got incoming light here. Uh, but the light is going to be unpolarized so maybe the angle of polarization is like this maybe another one's like this so i'm going to say unpolarized okay so the incoming light i'm just drawing white means the direction of travel and these little blue are going to be the direction that it's polarized so the light coming in is all randomly polarized coming in it passes through this in this example let's say a vertical polarizer in other words, only light with a polarization that's exactly vertical can get through. And it turns out it's not exactly true. It's the vertical component because the light might have, you know, some of it is uh, vertical. So as long as you take the components, it works. But we don't have to worry about that. Let's just essentially say coming out, the only light that's going to leave this thing right here is now going to be vertically polarized. So hopefully that makes sense. So what happens is this, so, so incoming light, I0 here, this incoming uh, or incident light is randomly polarized, it's unpolarized, it passes through a vertical, let's say, uh, polarizer. That means it's going to come out and only be oscillating straight up and down. In other words, this light now is only oscillating straight up and down, there's no component going in any other directions. This thing stopped everything else. Um, one way to think about it, it's not exactly true, but it might help. Just imagine it's like a little kid's game, you know, where you might see like a big block and there's like a big uh, square shaped hole in it. And then you give a little infant, you know, a bunch of different blocks. One's a circle, one's a square. Only the square one fits through the square shaped hole. You can imagine that, that only these sort of vertical sort of pieces here pass through this. It's not exactly true though, because you can have uh, something that's got a weird polarization, let's say some other angle, and some of it will go through, but just to imagine it, because it's all about the component, breaking it up into X and Y and Z components. But coming out, it'll be vertically polarized, and then you have another polarizer, and this one, maybe the, uh, maybe the angle of how it's polarized is different, so maybe I'll draw it like, I don't know, something like this. So it's at a different angle, I'm trying to see in 3D here, but in, in, you know, if you're looking at it straight you know, in front of you, maybe the first one is vertically polarized, maybe the second one, this other hand, maybe it's like this. That's what I'm trying to draw. It's at a different angle. It's not parallel, it's some other angle. Okay, so that's the other one.
Then we could say that the light that comes out right here, we're going to call that I. And the question is, you know, how, how is the light polarized? How is the light coming out here? And there's going to be an effect, and it turns out, depending on the angle between these two polarizers, you can have totally different intensity of light coming out. So this is going to be what's called Malice's Law, and it relates just these. So maybe I'll uh, define this. So I is going to be the intensity, we're going to need this as well, of the um, transmitted light. You know, the light that goes through. Whoops, I need to write properly with a D here. Transmitted light. That'll again be measured in watts per meter squared. And we're also going to define something called theta, which is going to be the angle between um, the two polarizers. And that angle can be in degrees. It doesn't have to be in radians like we were seeing before. So when I say the angle between them, I just mean, you know, if one is vertically polarized, like we looked before. So this one's vertically polarized. The other one, let's say it's like this, then we would measure the angle between here and here in degrees, and that's what we would use. And the equation goes like this. This is Malice's Law. It's on your data booklet. Uh, so it goes like this. I equals I zero cosine squared of theta. That's it. So what it tells you then is that the intensity of light that's transmitted is related to the incoming light, right, the incident light, but it depends on the square of the cosine of the angle. So you take the cosine of the angle and you square that answer. Uh, but the notation is normally to write cos squared, but it's really cosine theta, all that in parentheses, squared. But in math, the notation we use is cos squared theta. So it means on your calculator, let's say the angle was uh, 15 degrees, you'd say cosine of 15 degrees, you'd press enter, and you'd say answer, you know, squared, enter. And then you'd multiply that by this and you'd get that. It has some really neat practical uh, implications though. What if, what if theta is equal to 90 degrees? In other words, what if one polarizer, let's say, is vertical and the next polarizer behind it is horizontal? What happens then? Well, cosine of 90, you can do it on a calculator if you know how to draw cosine curves, cosine of 90 is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So when we say that uh, sometimes these are called crossed polarizers, in other words, one polarizer like this, the other one 90 degrees to it, doesn't matter, it could be like this, as long as the other one's 90 degrees to it. Right? All we care about is the angle between these two polarizers. If that angle is 90 degrees, then the intensity of a light that's transmitted is zero. This has a really cool practical implication. There's a couple neat things that you can use this for. Um, one example, I used to always do this with my students, uh, at least when I lived in the US and Canada. I went to high school in the US, um, but I've done most of my teaching in Canada and Denmark. At least in Canada and the US, I used to go to Walmart and I would buy a pair of uh, fishing glasses. They're polarized. So what would happen is this, um, let's see here. So you're on your fishing boat, so here's the water, maybe I'll draw the water as blue, like this. And so you're on your fishing boat here. Here's me standing on my fishing boat. And I would like to see some little fish here. So maybe I have, a, let's see, a fish. I'm really bad at drawing animals, you'll see that in a second. But I have my little fish here that I want to see. Looks more like a shark, or I don't know, but I want to see this fish. But the problem is, there is sunlight. Right, and the sun is actually shining lots of light at me. So what the sun might be doing is it might be doing this right here and giving me what we call glare. In other words, if I'm trying to see the, the little fish in the water, I actually can't see it because there's, you know, the reflection of the sun in the water is really bright. Now remember what we talked about in Brewster's Law, because I'm going to, uh, this uh, polarizing uh, sunglasses for fishing actually uses both. It uses Brewster's Law idea that um, when light reflects off something, in a lot of cases, remember if uh, n equals tan phi, in other words the angle of incidence here, um, 
so that light will be exactly um, plane polarized, at least some of it will be. It'll be plane polarized horizontally because it'll be parallel to the surface after it bounces. So that means from Brewster's law then we saw that some of the light will be horizontally polarized. So what you do is you buy yourself a set of polarized fishing glasses that are vertically polarized. And because of that, vertically polarized compared to horizontally polarized, the angle will be 90, the transmission will be zero. Doesn't mean you won't see any light. You're still going to see the sunlight coming in because it's randomly polarized, right? It's unpolarized. But the light that was exactly plain polarized from the water, that component of it, will disappear. Which means when you wear these uh, polarized fishing glasses uh, that are vertically polarized, they will take away a lot of the glare from water. So then you put on these glasses and now you can see little fish in the water. How cool is that? Um, now you can use this in other cases too. Um, I've seen a situation where you can have some cool, um, uh, cool windows. And imagine you have two polarizers, one like this, one like this, and the windows can actually rotate. Maybe it's a circular window. As you rotate the angle, you can make it totally dark if they're 90 degrees to each other, or totally bright. So you can have like a window dimmer just by, you know, you press a switch basically, and I've seen uh, some plans for this, and it basically rotates the angle of polarization between two windows. And uh, that's really cool, I think. So there's some neat examples of uses of Malice's Law and Brewster's Law.